You are listening to the Thoughts from a Page podcast, which is a member of the Evergreen Podcasts Network. My name is Cindy Burnett, and I love to talk about books with anyone and everyone. While listening to my podcast, you will hear author interviews, behind-the-scenes conversations about various aspects of the publishing world, theme discussions with other book lovers, and more. For more book recommendations and a complete list of all of my interviews, check out my website, thoughtsfromapage.com, and follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Thoughts From a Page. In 2022, I would love for you to join my Patreon group. I offer at least two bonus episodes a month and a monthly advanced read and pre-publication author chat. For those on Facebook, I host a special Patreon Facebook group where we all chat books. Thanks so much to those who already participate, and I hope you will consider joining us. For this behind-the-scenes episode, I am chatting with Robin Witten, who is the founder and editor of Audiophile Magazine. Robin is passionate about audiobooks. After 30 years of talking about what's good and what's happening in the audiobook space, she continues to delight in the changes and evolution of formats and the forms audiobook storytelling takes. Robin has served on the board of directors of the Audio Publishers Association and as an Audi Awards judge. Getting a field education starting a magazine, Robin also attended Stanford's publishing program and is a graduate of Vassar College. She listens to audiobooks while gardening and walking and lives in Portland, Maine, where Audiophile is based. I hope you enjoy our conversation. And now for a quick break. For the last year, I have been focusing more on my health and eating habits. In connection with that, I have started drinking AG1 in the morning. When I started drinking AG1 daily, I could feel a real difference in my health and energy levels. That is because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. I recommend AG1 to all of my family and friends because the company has a team of doctors and scientists, it is tested for 950 contaminants, and is NSF certified for sport, it is formulated based on the latest science, and it maintains high quality standards. Thanks AG1 for sponsoring my show. AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash thoughts from a page. That's drinkag, the number one, dot com slash thoughts from a page. Check it out. And now back to my show. Welcome, Robin. How are you today? Oh, I'm great, Cindy. Lovely to be here chatting with you. I'm so glad you're here for my behind the scenes series, and you are the founder and editor of Audiophile Magazine. And my listeners and I are going to learn a ton about Audiophile Magazine and what you do. Well, I hope so. We're very focused on one thing, which is audiobooks. So <laughs> that, that's, that's where we can start. Well, and that's a popular thing these days. So let's start out with you talking about how and when you got started what you do now, and just everything that's happening with Audiophile Magazine. Absolutely. Great place to start, uh, which actually is uh, I started Audiophile 30 years ago now as an audiobook listener myself. I was interested in audiobooks. I used to get them from the library, but I couldn't really find out very much information about them. And I used to chat with our library director, who was also a listener. And he said, yes, you know, libraries have a tough time because they're trying to collect audiobooks, but there's really no information. It's just basically on the book, but nothing on the performance part of audiobooks. So as you know, as a listener, the performance and the narrator and that listening experience is the whole deal. That's really what is important when you're listening. And so I thought, oh, well, this is 1992, so desktop publishing. I thought, oh, I'll write a little newsletter about reviews of audiobooks. And that's where it started with 25 uh, reviews of audiobooks with a focus on the performance, the narrator, and what makes the listening experience uh, great or not so great. And, you know, 30 years later, whew, things have changed a lot in uh, the audiobook industry, but actually, Audiophile is still doing the same thing, reviewing and recommending audiobooks and with an emphasis on the listening experience. And 
who the voice is that you are listening to and what are they doing to make it great? Well, first, congratulations on 30 years. That's amazing. <laughs> it astounds me too. But, you know, I keep thinking, well, just think about what the next 30 years are going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and the changes that will happen over those periods of time as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you started out, audiobooks were on CDs, right? You'd go to the library and you'd get the collection of four or seven or however many CDs? Well, actually, they were cassettes. <laughs> oh, wow. So this is even before CDs. Yes, uh, there were CDs, but not very, very, very few in audiobooks. And uh, a lot of audiobooks were abridged, which really annoyed everybody. But it was all about the price point, you know, for being sold in bookstores. And, you know, the audio publishers uh, were just getting interested and really just figuring it out. Uh, so as things have evolved now, as you know, uh, almost all audiobooks are unabridged or they are original audio programs, which are, you know, probably made from a script uh, the way like a radio drama, something like that. But, and there are lots of publishers, some of the same publishers who were in the game in 1992, and lots of new publishers bringing really an amazing array of audiobooks to the format and our books to the format and making that a lots of choices for listeners. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the abridged versus not abridged because I interviewed Carolyn Hewitt earlier in the year, who's an audiobook narrator. And one of the questions my Patreon group had for her was, there are times when sentences are dropped out or paragraphs, because a lot of people, I guess, I, I don't do this, I just either listen or I read, but they do it together. They read and they listen, and that they don't always completely parallel each other, which I found so surprising. That would be unusual, because usually, unless they're dropping he said, she said, it's, you know, because really the authors want everything there. Yeah, I don't know. I just know it was a question that three or four people brought up and they said it happens decently regularly. I don't think it's like plot points or, you know, big pivotal points, but that it, there wasn't always a word for word matchup, which I thought was fascinating. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, you know, it isn't it isn't back to the days of when an entire, you know, 400 page novel was on three cassette, four cassettes. <laughs> you know, now we have lots of different choices of different kinds of audiobooks available, which is really interesting. Well, that has to have made your job a lot easier to have audiobooks in the format they are now. Well, it's interesting because as a review and recommendation source, we're on the right side of all those changes in that we weren't trying to sell them. We don't sell them or rent. And so we're just talking about them. So the issues of working through the most popular format or multiple formats for for a title was not something that we had to deal with. Um, and I think from Audiophile's point of view, the most exciting thing was the development of digital audiobooks that basically took your audiobook and made it a seamless recording without, you know, being chunked up in either CD tracks or cassettes or pieces that would fall on the floor when you really wanted the next chapter, that continuous type of audio file that was, you know, available as a downloadable audio file made the listening experience just so much easier and so much better for everyone. Absolutely. I think it's interesting when I go back and listen to an older book that was originally done on a CD and they've just taken the CDs and inputted them into a digital file because you still hear that chapter one end of this disc, starting the next disc. Oh, it's dear. really funny. It's only happened to me maybe twice, but it just kind of takes me back to when you would listen that way. And I'm like, right. oh, that's so funny. But it also probably is easier for you digitally because you just get your hands on it automatically via email or however you go download it through some website versus having to wait on it to arrive and then listen to it. Right. Well, the fit from a, being reviewers on our side, again, we had to receive a physical package of the audiobook and then transship it, ship it out to the reviewer. And, you know, the time that's involved in that was always, you know, it just slowed things down. Now, as you say, we get electronic files. We send electronic files as the assignment for our reviewer and the whole process can be speeded up a lot. Yeah, that's got to make it a lot easier. How many reviewers do you have? Well, we have almost 100 reviewers. 
uh, working with us, and they're all over the country, some international, a few. And, you know, what our, uh, I guess, our main requirement for reviewers is that the person is a passionate listener and an experienced listener so that they, and really they think about not just the story they're hearing, but they can think about in a critical way, why is that making the experience moving, frightening, you know, all the emotional part, why are you responding to it? Because that's part of the review process. And, uh, you know, so we like to have, obviously like to have good writers and our reviews, for anyone who's checked these out, they're very short. They're a little over a hundred words. So it's a bit like haiku reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> really condense it down. That's it. That's it. And you know, it also, it's, it's a good thing on the reader's end of looking at the review and deciding whether this is something I'm interested in because it's short and sweet. So how do you decide which audiobooks you're going to review? It's quite a process to decide because, of course, there are thousands upon thousands of audiobooks now being published each year and, you know, many each month. And so our managing editor does a really great job looking at advance information about books, books that are being talked about. So the buzz on books from the, uh, you know, the industry press, listening to programs like NPR, who's being interviewed, what the authors are saying. And then we also like to really pay attention to the narrators and who's the, the narrator for different books. And, you know, just trying to get enough mix, get enough variety and diversity in what we're reviewing. So we have, you know, like a priority queue <laughs> of uh, titles that we'd like to review, which is maybe twice as many as we actually can review. And we're, we're reviewing a lot. We're reviewing 50 audiobooks a week. Wow. But there are probably 100 there <laughs> waiting to be reviewed at any time. And so, you know, we have to kind of get it down to a manageable amount of titles. And, you know, sometimes we miss stuff, but, uh, you know, Jennifer is very good at finding all the things that people are going to be talking about. And we also, we love to discover things or the reviewers discover something that nobody's talking about, but is like, wow, you really have to listen to this. It's maybe not something you've come across before. But it's, you know, that discovery process is, and that part of what we do is exciting. Well, I totally get that on the sheer volume of books that are coming out for you in audiobook format, for me in book format, because I only interview people whose books I've read and liked, but I get pitched so many and there's just only so much time. And there are times when later I've missed one because I just didn't have time to add in one more slot or wasn't sure about the book. And I try to go back and pick them up sometimes, but there's just only so many hours in the day. And so to make sure I'm prepared and I've read the books, you just have to say no sometimes. Right. And of course, there are new, there are new books coming out every week. <laughs> exactly. I always say that I could fill every single day with a book interview if I just had the time to do that. But there's only me, so unfortunately, I don't. Well, it's really, it's really interesting because I think it is you know, that discovery process of how you find out about a book that you want to read or listen to is, you know, not an easy, it's not easy as a listener to, you know, find audiobooks that you're, you're interested in. And so I think that what we do is so crucial because we're trying to say, you know, this is a, a really great audio experience. It may not be the book that they're talking about this week on the morning shows, but it is an experience that you can enjoy as a listener. And this is why and all that kind of thing. And, you know, one of the things that we like to do, of course, is, you know, make sure we're getting all the big books, but really discovering titles, sometimes from independent authors, sometimes just a title that didn't quite get the attention that it might have in the general audience. We love to say, oh, but this is a great experience. Great listening. Well, that's one of the things I wanted to talk with you about because I feel like audiobook creators have really stepped it up several notches in the last 
four or five years, but especially lately. Um, some of the stories that I have thought of were just amazing on audio were Will by Will Smith, Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore, and How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water by Angie Cruz. And I've seen so many people posting on Instagram about those because it's so much more than just somebody reading it. There's all these other things going on in the background and woven into the experience of listening to it. And I just think that's amazing. It's getting so creative. Well, it is. And certainly there are lots of ways. There's so many creative ways to approach an audio production. And of course, just like, you know, a film director or a conductor of an orchestra or anything can be done many ways. So a narrator has a creative response to uh, what they are, are reading. And, you know, they give you that extra performance that we really appreciate as listeners. And sometimes there's other stuff added into the performance. In the case of Acts of Violet, there's a podcast, so they create podcast music for it. They read it like it's a podcast. You know, I think it's so clever that they're really trying to make it such an immersive experience. And I, I often see people posting about narrators and how they can make or break a production. Absolutely. Well, that's really such a key element. And the whole thing, uh, you know, the way the flow of a program, I mean, a straight up novel is one thing. But when you have the opportunity to bring in, say, archival fo footage uh, of recordings or sound effects, all these different things, I mean, it just um, really expands the possibilities of uh, what a listening, what an audiobook can be. It really does. I find that just fascinating. And it's so much fun to listen to those immersive performances. Yes. So Audiophile has two podcasts, and I'd love to hear more about them. Oh, love to love to talk about them because they're they're new, you know, 30 years of a print magazine, and now we've got something new. So one of the podcasts is Behind the Mic with Audiophile Magazine, and that's a very a daily uh, five days a week, short podcast that recommends just one audiobook in each episode. So it's really just like, what should I listen to today? We talk about it. We play a sound clip. It's very short and sweet. And it's really just, you know, recommending great audiobooks each day. And that is, that's a fun thing. It's a little different than most podcasts that go are longer. But this is just, you know, trying to help people find a new audiobook any day they, they tune in. And then the other podcast, which is Audiobook Break, is a little different because the idea behind that is to basically serialize an existing audiobook into the podcast format. This is not new because Charles Dickens did that with David Copperfield. <laughs> so, and, you know, chapter a day programs have been around for a while, but right now with the interest in podcasts and so many people who listen to, to podcasts, but sometimes I think are reluctant or maybe just have not experienced uh, a full length audiobook, they're not sure. And so this is a way to help people say, oh, here is a here is a podcast that is actually an audiobook chapter by chapter and you know sometimes it's a classic right now we just started this week we launched our fifth season with Dracula that's a wonderful thing to be listening to in this time of year it is the perfect time of year so how did you choose Dracula well we thought that something seasonal would be really fun and Gildart Jackson, who is the narrator of uh, this version of Dracula, does a very fun approach. He recorded it as what he calls a fireside reading. And so it's as if he were reading it chapter by chapter. You were sitting there. Well, you wouldn't sit there for, you know, 10, 15 hours with him <laughs> reading one at a time. And so it reinforces the idea that you listen to this a couple chapters one day we do chapters come up three times a week and that's the way you'll get through a uh, Dracula. <laughs> and both of your podcasts can be found on all of the major podcast platforms. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And there's links on your website as well. Cause I saw them there. There are, yes, you can listen from our website, but also through Apple podcasts or wherever anyone gets their, their podcast. That kind of standard wherever you listen to your podcast language. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Dracula is definitely a timely read for October and November. 
and kind of fun, a little campy. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had fun with that audiobook break. Sometimes we like to talk to the narrator in a, uh, like a, a YouTube recorded program or have a special program with, with the narrators. So we had a, have a wonderful program where Gildart Jackson, the narrator of Dracula, is talking to Matt Kirkland, who is the founder and, and instigator of Dracula Daily, which has been sort of a phenomenal newsletter that he has done over time with a little chapter of Dracula being sent out as a newsletter. So he had the kind of idea of a serialized Dracula program as a newsletter, and Gildart has the idea of the recording, and so they chat, and it's quite fun, different for us, and we love the spontaneity of having those programs. Absolutely. It really adds to the experience. Yeah. It gives you another reason to really delve into these podcasts. Exactly. You have a section of your site where you highlight various narrators. How do you decide who to highlight? How did that come about? What was that process like? Well, of course, as a listener, everybody is interested in the narrators. So we we love to have a really rich section of uh, narrator profiles with recordings that we've done with with narrators in interviews, um, what we call their audiography. So if you're absolutely hooked on a particular narrator, you can look them up and find everything that we've reviewed that they've done and get some suggestions there. But just, you know, to tell the, tell our readers and visitors a, a little bit more about them, because it's, it's a game of uh, fandom around the narrators. It certainly is. And I think that's a wonderful resource because I often see people talking about loving a narrator and then going back and tracking down everything they narrated. So being able to go to your site and just click right through it, learn a little bit more about the narrator is fabulous. And it is interesting because sometimes I know with the narrators that I love, they're such good storytellers. So whatever the story is they're going to tell me, I'm going with it. It may not be a topic or a subject that I would have picked out necessarily, but you know, if it's a favorite voice, I'm going to follow. <laughs> it's like people say, you can listen to them read the grocery list, right? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but it does get more interesting when you find out what other titles they've done. <laughs> and more interesting than the grocery list, I would assume. Yeah. <laughs> An audiophile has earphones awards and Golden Voices accolades. Can you tell me what those are and how they work? Well, earphone awards are a great way that we have of really uh, signaling exceptional audio performances. So it's a, a bit like a starred review, but it's perhaps even more than that in the sense that we really judge them on how, you know, the, that ex essential audio performance. For each reviewer, it has to be exceptional. It has to be better than all the other things they've been listening to and really stand out. So those are our really great recommendations. We have, oh, maybe five earphone titles each week, uh, maybe not that many, but they're really the titles to pay attention to. So it's awarded on a regular basis versus annually having the earphone awards. That is correct. And we do have the annual awards as well, which we can talk about. But just to say a little bit about Golden Voices, again, this is another way of highlighting the really exceptional narrators. And this is a sort of a bit of a lifetime achievement award that we give out once a year to really a very small group of narrators who have, you know, done a huge body of work, a great variety of work consistently over a number of years. And just, you know, they are the best, the cream of the crop. Got it. So if they're a Golden Voices Award winner, then you know they're going to be an outstanding narrator. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have a whole section of the audio file site that is devoted to Golden Voices. Oh, that's wonderful. Again, gives people some guidance as to who they might want to listen to. <laughs> Absolutely. And and we all know we don't want to be stuck with an audio book of something we don't want to listen to. Exactly. And like I said, you hear people commenting on that all the time. Like, I really liked the book, but I didn't like the narrator at all. So it's interesting to see how impactful that is. 
Yes. And, you know, sound clips are very important. And, you know, these little podcasts that we do where we're actually talking more about what that narrator is doing, you know, a little bit of a conversation about it is added to, so on a page that's being reviewed, if we have a podcast, that's also on that page, which is kind of fun. Got it. Link it all together. Mm -hmm. And then you do annual awards like the best of 2022, which will be coming up somewhat soon. How does that work? Absolutely. Well, we're just like everyone else in the in the publishing business. We're doing a best of the year each year. But what's a little different about Audiophile's best uh, list is it's really the audio focus, the listening experience. So something that has a really high production values and complexity might be on our list where it probably isn't on somebody else's list or it's an ensemble cast that where all of the casting of, you know, it might be a single story or it might be a collection of stories are all, you know, just at the highest level. And, we, you know, it's a, it's a list. Uh, we have nine subject categories and uh, five titles in each. So it's a short list that, you know, listeners and, and anyone you know, wanting to think about maybe a, a, a list for the year of things to listen to can go right down. It's not so huge, but it has a lot of variety uh, within the subjects and within the type of titles that we pick for our best audiobooks of the year. So what kind of categories are those? Pretty much what you would expect. <laughs> Mystery and suspense, romance, fiction, memoir, biography and history, sci-fi and fantasy kids and family uh, category, and which is very fun, that whole, uh, whole part of the listening experience. And of course, teens, young adults. I was curious if it was genres or more related to the audio experience, like best narrator, or best performance by a group. I wasn't sure how you broke it out. Nope. Nope. That's, it, is, it is on genres. And when will that drop? And that will be out on December 1st this year. Well, that's very exciting. It is very fun. So what do you consider your role in the publishing industry? Well, you know, audiobooks have been experiencing terrific growth over the last decade, really, when other numbers perhaps were not as positive. And, you know, audiobooks continue to grow in sales volume and uh, number of users and all of that. And, and I think that the time that audiobooks are in the in the forefront is now and it's really important i think what audiophile does is to help people discover titles to listen to but also to have that critical review aspect that's you know diverse because we're ha- working with a lot of different reviewers but you know to to sort of reinforce those standards that you know the the industry embraces for the most part but you know to be talking about that and to make it make it possible to have standards within within audiobooks and to emphasize i think that this is not print it's a different format and these are the things that are different about it that that listening experience that emotional piece that the narrator may bring and what else can be different about an audiobook experience versus a print book or even an ebook? A lot of times, uh, listeners' preferences about what they like to listen to versus read in text is different. The genres, like mystery and romance, sci fi, are particularly well suited, I think, to audio because of the storytelling aspects, whereas some, t- some of the nonfiction, maybe history, maybe a cultural title, anything, certainly anything that has, that depends on graphics <laughs> of any kinds or lists of things that you should be paying attention to in the, in the world of personal development. Those really are hard sometimes with audiobooks. So the storytelling, you know, a lot of what audiobooks do in a, in a really amazing way is the storytelling so that the subjects that involve storytelling are often more successful. That's true. My favorite is actually memoir, especially when the person who's written the memoir is reading it, because I think it's just so engaging to hear them telling their story. 
Right. And I and I think that piece, which is really archival in a way, I mean, you capture that moment in time when the person who wrote the memoir, who has written uh, about themselves, you know, has to say it aloud. And sometimes that is very, you know, revealing in a way that sometimes they don't expect. And it feels more personal. Very personal. Well, when people are looking for your reviews, I know you have a website, audiophilemagazine.com, but where else can people find you? Oh, well, we have a lot of fun on Instagram, (laughs) which uh, is the audiophile behind the mic podcast, because we're mostly focused on the podcast on our Instagram account, highlighting the titles that are coming up each day and some of the extra material that we have, which is fun. We're also pretty active on Twitter where we're getting a lot of interaction with narrators and authors who are enthusiastic about the reviews and Facebook and our YouTube channel, which is interesting because we have a lot of quite short videos made by the narrators themselves talking about a title that they've just recorded. Oh, that's fun. I always love seeing that on Twitter when people like Carolyn Hewitt will say, oh, I just finished recording Jacqueline in Paris, be on the lookout for it. And that makes me so happy because I love her voice. So then I know to be looking for that book when it comes out. Right. And you know, they, they've, they've put their heart and soul into the recording. And when they're talking about why they were excited about uh, that title. Maybe we should talk to Caroline and see if maybe she loves Paris. And so that's why she loved the, doing the book. That's what we'd find out in a little one of these uh, YouTube videos. Exactly. Okay, Robin, now we're to the question I always enjoy asking, which is your own personal favorites in the audiobook arena. Well, Cindy, I always have favorites. And I'm a little bit of uh, the love the one you're with kind of uh, listener because I'm listening all the time. So I always have something that I'm very enthusiastic about. And right now that is The Marriage Proposal by Maggie O'Farrell, which have you read this? I haven't yet. I've read her older books. I haven't read Hamnet and I haven't read this one, which is kind of funny because I'm a huge historical fiction person, but I need to get to it. I've heard glowing things. Well, this was very fun. It's uh, set in the re- in the Italian Renaissance. And I was recently in Italy, so I listened to it while I was there, and it was absolutely perfect. I bet so. Because they're talking about all the details of the court and her clothing and the castles and the various things. Oh, and it was just the right kind of atmosphere. And the narrator, Genevieve Gaunt, is a newcomer to me. This is, this is also fun. I mean, she's recorded a few things. I've never listened to her before, but she was perfect casting. She had just the right uh, sort of voice for Lucretia uh, de' Medici, who is a child bride of 15. Uh, And, uh, you know, it was just, it was just great casting and so atmospheric in many ways and just made it, made it a, a, a favorite for me right now. Have you listened to Hamnet? I haven't. I haven't, but now I want to. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. And that's, that's always fun. Of course, it'll be a different narrator, but, you know, it just as, you know, as readers, one thing leads to another. How about any others that you have recently listened to and loved? Well, I'm, I'm also a, a big mystery fan and I like thrillers. I'm a big fan of um, Harlan Coben and <laughs> Stephen Weber is the narrator for pretty much all of his titles uh, or his recent titles anyway. And I have, um, I've been very excited about, I guess it's his most recent one. It was from this summer, The Match. And that, that was a favorite of mine. I love what Steven Weber does. And then maybe possibly my favorite mystery of the year is The Maid. <laughs> which I think you probably have read it or listened to it. I've read it. Yeah. Yeah. And the narrator of that, again, a new voice for me, Lauren Ambrose, but she just did an amazing job. Such a clever story and uh, a brilliant job uh, with the audiobook. I love mysteries and thrillers too. They're so much fun and they're a great escape. They are. They are. And my list it always is growing. I can, you know, I go back, I go <laughs> something new. It's always great. 
Well, this has been wonderful, Robin. Thank you so much for joining me on this behind the scenes episode of the Thoughts from a Page podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Cindy. It was fun to talk. I hope to do that again. Me too. You've got questions. We've got answers. Business leadership, ownership, and sales can be challenging. Tune into the Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast to learn from the world's experts. Join me, your host, Diane Helbig, as I chat with people who have expertise in various areas of business. You'll enjoy the lively conversations that are focused on providing you with the ideas, tips, and suggestions you need to realize greater success. Get what you need for your business when you need it from the people who have the answers. Accelerate Your Business Growth is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. If you like this episode, and I hope you did, please follow me on Instagram at Thoughts From a Page. Consider joining my Patreon group to access bonus content and support the podcast. Tell all of your friends about the show and rate it or subscribe to it wherever you listen to your podcasts. I would really appreciate it. I hope you'll tune in next time. You've got questions, we've got answers. Business leadership, ownership, and sales can be challenging. Tune into the Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast to learn from the world's experts. Join me, your host, Diane Helbig, as I chat with people who have expertise in various areas of business. You'll enjoy the lively conversations that are focused on providing you with the ideas, tips, and suggestions you need to realize greater success. Get what you need for your business when you need it from the people who have the answers. Accelerate Your Business Growth is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.